So in this video, I'm going to show you how to audit your site using Sitevault. I have recently introduced some changes and added some redirects to my to my website. So I will be crawling my site to, to see if, if I forgot to add some redirects and things like that. So here is, uh, here is where you can add a new project and set it up so that Sitebulb can crawl it. So let's add my, new, my site. So here's the crawler type. Uh, I'm choosing a Chrome crawler because I want Sitebulb to render a JavaScript uh, so that I can be sure that my site looks identical after rendering uh, so that the source code is identical to the rendered HTML. So uh, let's click save and continue. And there will be another set of settings in just a second. Okay, um, so here are the types of data that we can ask Sitebulb to, to e extract for us. So these uh, search engine optimization is kind of obvious, page resources as well, performance and mobile friendly, though, so we definitely want to check that. Uh, there is a new feature in Sitebulb 5 uh, that also allows you to check web vitals, analyzed web vitals based on, on a sample of 10% of your URLs. So I'm definitely going to, to, to check that as well. Um, there are also performance budget, budget configurations. So if, you, if your site is very huge and you are uh, maybe worried that uh, Sitebulb can kill it, then you can, then you can kind of set it up here, but I'm not worried about that. Structured data, let's, let's see who's there. Security international. So this is something you want to check if your site has many languages. My mine does not have, so I'm not checking that AMP. Uh, the same, my site uh, does not use AMP. And other things, uh, Google Analytics. We are not going to 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 connect uh, Google Analytics and Google Search Console data for that crawl, crawl sources. So we can also ask Sitebulb here to crawl sitemaps, which is an a useful thing if you want to, for instance, check whether um, there are unnecessary URLs in, in your sitemap or whether there are URLs that shouldn't be there, for instance, indexed, uh, for instance, no indexed URLs or redirected URLs and things like that. So we can either manually uh, paste uh, the URLs of your sitemaps here or Sitebulb can do that for you. So um, I think uh, Sidewalk has already found uh, the, uh, the address of my site sitemap. So, I, so it's, 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 it's done here. You are a list, so we're not going to submit the list of URLs to crawl. Content extraction. Okay, so here we don't need that for now. Crawler settings. So you, you can, for instance, specify the render timeout. Uh, so let's leave this one second, it's okay. HTTP authentication, so we don't need that. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, robot directives, so we'll be using Sidebulb smart smartphone agents. There are different types of agents. You can also use, for instance, iPhone or Google smartphone, but let's let's stay with with the default one. URL exclusions. Okay, I think that's that's everything I need for for that crawl. So let's click start. And let's wait for a few seconds, uh, minutes probably before my sidebulb finishes its work. Okay, so the crawling is complete. Uh, the crawl is complete. Let's now see what we have here. So I'm clicking view audit to see what Sidebulb has for me. Okay, so as you can see, we can we also have different types of scores, like uh, overall audit score, SEO score, security score, page speed score. So once the, the crawl is complete, 
your task is to usually the best the best thing the best place to start is to simply go through this overview and see what's there so let, let's go through this so we can see the number of crawled urls internal external resources maybe things that couldn't be crawled everything is okay here so here are the details of the audit here are the te technologies that Sidebulb uh, noticed are on my site. Here is the crawl depth visualization of my uh, of the structure of my site, and this is usually good to have like three or four levels, not more, uh, because if you have m like more than four, five, six levels, and you have like many web pages, then it may be difficult, may become difficult for crawlers to get to those deeper, deeper levels of your site. So uh, I put a lot of emphasis on, on the structure of my site uh, since I started creating it and that's why it is kind of okay. Uh, so here uh, you can see the overview of status codes. You can also download this, this image, you can click on a specific status code to see um, to see for instance whether how many what, what's the percentage of websites of web pages that have that return that specific code here you can see uh, url segments url type by depth html url sources content types so as you can see my my site is quite heavy in images because I'm mostly creating tutorials, so there are a lot of images in, in each tutorial I have. Okay, so let's now see um, let's now see uh, each of those sections, what's there. So let's go to SEO. So this is the SEO score. It's kind of okay. And uh, the, the, the first place you usually want to go to are hints. So anything that's marked in, in red can potentially be uh, an error, but this is your job as an SEO to decide whether this is indeed an error. So here we have uh, one critical issue. We have a bunch of high priority issues, like has only one followed internal linking URL. So this is uh, an important thing. For instance, here we have you can see the number of pages that a specific hint relates to, and even if it is a high priority error, and you see that it relates to just one page, and you have like a million pages, then probably this is not so uh, serious. So let's see uh, view affected URLs. So let's see those broken internal URLs, view affected URLs. So here I can see, yeah, so this, these, these are uh, affiliate links on my site. Uh, and so this is basically not a problem. It's okay uh, because I'm using a three or two redirection, fr redirection from those, uh, from those uh, affiliate links to the actual affiliate link. So this is not an issue. This is just the tool telling me that this is something I should check. Okay, let's get back. Broken internally, okay. Uh, has an anchored image with an with no old text. So another possible issue. Well, one thing I really like like about Sidebulb is that um, whenever it shows you those hints, uh, there is al always an explanation of what it really means. While in Screaming Frog, you don't have that. You just have the, a list of things that were checked, the numbers and the number of affected pages, and that's all. Here you have those explanations, which I really like. And there is also always a link to learn more. And once you click on that link, you will go to a, to a very in-depth article. So if you are new to SEO auditing, so doing audits with Sidebulb and really reading everything that's here and reading the, those read more articles will really help you learn a lot. And 
this is something that I also sometimes do because I can still learn new things when, when doing audits with sidewall. Okay, so here are low priority issues, but again, those priorities were assigned by Sidebulb and it is your job to, to kind of decide whether this is really a low priority or a high priority issue. Insights, insights usually, according to Sidebulb, are not uh, an issue. In most cases, these are not issues. So, okay, uh, so this is the SEO section. Let's go to internal URLs. So here you have, you have uh, all of the hints for that section. Uh, if you go to one specific subsection here, like internal, uh, then you can see on, only the issues, hints relating to internal URLs. So those internal, broken internal URLs. So here you can take a look again at the crawl depth. This is this is useful for kind of making sure that the structure of the site isn't too deep or too too flat. Status codes. So if you want to, for instance, check those status codes, you just need to click here. Sorry, click here, and you can see the number of URLs that that have that have a specific status code. And here are the URLs, so that you can actually see all, all of the URLs and their status code. So here I can see the URLs that return 200 status OK. Here is a redirected URL. I don't really know what it is, to be honest. I need to check that. OK. Uh, OK. Another one, so this is a 301 redirect. So this is the permanent redirect for from an HTTP version. So this is OK. And OK, everything else I think looks OK. These are my affiliate links, hidden, hidden cloaked affiliate links. OK, so links. Again, similar lets you take Let's you take a deep look into internal links, all those uh, status codes. So very useful for for auditing your internal structure. Hints again. Here are just the hints for internal links. Uh, for links, um, indexability, indexability. Again, very useful. Hints. Similar um, here, uh, you can see the number of indexable URLs, the number of non-indexable URLs. So let's see what URLs are not indexable uh, on my site. And before we do that, here is here is uh, an interesting thing. Uh, Sitebulb will check the robots.txt configuration and show you whether the site is crawlable for Google, can be crawled by Google, Bing, Yahoo, Yandex, and other most popular search engines. So let's see the non-indexable web pages on my site. Okay, so here I can see these are the, the web pages that are set to be you know, indexed. Uh, that cannot be indexed, maybe that are not set to no index, but cannot be indexed, and these are the URLs that have a no index tag or, or the URLs that are redirected, as you can see in this case. Okay, let's get back. Redirects, in case you want to dig dig deeper, here are, uh, here's the overview of redirects. Click on URLs and you can see all the URLs that are redirected. Very useful for kind of isolating only those URLs. On page SEO, so here you can analyze uh, titles, meta descriptions, H1 tags. You can also again view all the all the hints, all the URLs, and see just those uh, elements on page elements for each URL. So here is the home page. I can see the title. I can see the H1 tag, H2 tag, H2 second tag meta description, 
number of words, very useful. Uh, for instance, I can also sort those pages by the, the ones that are uh, that have the, the most words. So let's do that. So here, uh, the longest page on my side has, wow, that's a lot. And this is the technical SEO audit. So this is the longest page on my site. So this is useful. You can also do that the other way around. You can also check the pages that have the, the least number of uh, words, things like that. Very useful. Duplicate content. If there are some duplicates on the site, Sidebob will tell you that. Here are the things Sidebob checks for. For instance, technical duplicates. So if technical duplicates, for instance, happen when, when the site has URL parameters and each parameter kind of creates a separate URL and those separate URLs do not have canonical tags pointing to the URL without parameters. This is an example of a technical duplication. And there are different things you can also check. For instance, if the site has uh, web pages that have duplicate titles, very often this may indicate that those pages are duplicated. XML sitemaps. So here is the analysis of sitemaps on my site. Everything looks okay. Hints. So Sidebolt found one URL that is redirected. Let's see. View URLs. Okay, so SEO blog, yes. So this is the URL that is redirected to blog. Uh, that that's, that's a minor issue. Okay. Response and render. So this is something you definitely want to check. This section tells you whether uh, the rendered version of the site is similar, is identical to the source code, and it should be identical so that the crawlers can see all the content that, that is in the source code. Another thing that uh, Sidebob also checks for is security. So here, as you can see, I have oh, Sidebob noticed that I have mixed content. Mix, mixed content happens when, when uh, a URL is loaded over HTTP or even whether, or even where there is a link to an HTTP resource on your on your website, on some on on one page on your site. Let's see view view URLs. Okay, so uh, probably uh, somewhere on those uh, pages I have links to HTTP uh, HTTP resources. So this is something I should. Okay, so here I can see HTML. Uh, I can click here in secure resources and I can see, okay, so on those pages, those resources, uh, log, logo images uh, were loaded over HTTP. Okay, so this is something I, I will fix. Let's get back. Uh, security. Okay. Here, I can see that there are HTTP as URLs that contain one or more outgoing internal links to HTTP. So this is something I have already fixed. So this is uh, kind of the what, what what is left after I migrated from Bluehost to, to Cloudways. Uh, and uh, I had a staging site uh, which was loaded at first uh, over HTTP. And once I moved it to, to the once I moved it uh, effectively, uh, some of the links still were still um, placed in the form of HTTP, but this is this this has already been fixed. Okay, so you can also view uh, again URLs and see what's there. Page speed. So here uh, you can see the summary of the speed and the uh, web vitals, which is which is nice that uh, Sidebulb added this. So time to first byte, download time, first meaningful paint, time to first byte. 
Uh, you can also just view the hints and see what's what's happening. So dumb is 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 too big, but but I think it is not that that bad after all. So as you can see uh, here, sidebulb is showing a lot of hints, but I'm going to ignore most of the, those hints because the speed has really been taken care of on my site. And my site is in the high 90s uh, for in Google Page Speed Insights, and it passes all of the core vitals. And at this point, there is really no sense for me to keep obsessing and trying to fix everything that Sidebob is showing me because my site is fast enough and I'm getting all of the benefits that I can get from having a fast site that meets core vitals. So Sorry, side, side bulb, but I'm going to ignore those. Okay, mobile friendly. So here you can check whether the site is mobile friendly. You also need to kind of treat it with a grain of salt. So here, uh, side bulb is showing me that there are 21 URLs that probably have problems with being mobile friendly. And I don't think that's really the case. Uh, the best thing to verify if this is really the problem is to go to Google Search Console Mobile Usability Report and simply check what's there. If you have really, really have some problems with mobile usability, mobile friendliness, then you will see errors there. And this is the place to kind of draw your conclusions and act upon. But this is just, just the information that, that maybe something can be uh, fixed, but but you need to kind of analyze it uh, more deeply to confirm that this is really the problem. Uh, front end, okay. I don't think there is something very uh, serious here happening. Page resources. So this is an important part. Um, here you can see all of the images, the number of images you have on your site. You may want to click view and see them all. You can see their, their size, you can sort them by size. So as you can see, the, the biggest image is this GIF or a GIF. I never know how to say it. And other than that, my images are relatively small. As you can see, so I'm quite happy with the, with the size of my images. Some images have like one kilobyte. Okay, structured data. So this is, this is, uh, this is, I, I really like the way Sidebolt presents that. So it shows you the pages that have search features, which is, that can be shown uh, as rich results. Uh, it shows you whether there are um, validation errors. You can also just simply take a look at search features and see what rich results types your site is eligible to eligible for. So for instance, I can see that logo, article, breadcrumb, uh, video. So I can see the warnings, errors, everything is, is, is here. You can also check what types of schema are used on the site because here you have those rich results types of schema. Here you can see all types of schema that are on your site. Uh, you can export them. You can see the errors. For instance, here's an error on one site for blog posting. Data published, data. So there is, it, it says there is an invalid date time format. That's possible. I would have to check that, double check that. Here are the external URLs. So as you can see, uh, there are almost 200 external links from my site and none of those links has been bought by anyone. I'm not selling links. <laughs> and the links, the external links that are on my site, all of them are like true recommendations that I provide to my visitors, usually as part of my guides. I link to a lot of Google articles and other SEO resources I find especially useful. So let's see top external domains. 
as you can see there, this is basically only SEO stuff. So if you are auditing a site and you are kind of maybe suspecting that it is overdoing with links, selling links, you may want to go to here to external links and see what domains this site is really linking to. This may give you an idea of more or less what the site is doing. Okay, so uh, let's now uh, go to URL Explorer here. Here you can uh, just uh, take a, an even deeper look at all of the URLs on your site. Uh, you can sort them by, by crawl status and things like that. You can also um, view the internal URLs, for instance, broken redirects, error, and so on. External URLs, broken redirects, error. So let's see errors in external links. So this one, um, it says there is an error. So I may want to, uh, I may want to update this link if there is really an error and this link uh, doesn't work. So it is, it is really a good practice to, to run this type of audit uh, of your site once a month at least and see if something, maybe something became obsolete, some, some link became broken so that Google knows that you are kind of in control of what's going on with your site. With your site. Uh, okay, uh, external page resources, similar. Uh, one thing I like here a lot are images. And you can, for instance, only view the images that do not have an old text. Uh, images missing old text, URLs with images. Uh, and this is, this is very useful. URLs with images missing old text. So I see it very often that in audits, people just list the URLs, the images with old, without old text. It is very easy to export the list of such uh, images using, uh, using Screaming Frog. But okay, we have the list of images, but what, where are those images? On what web pages? So this is extremely useful. You have the list of URLs that have those images and it, it becomes like a ton easier to update those images uh, unless you're going to do it some kind of automatically but yeah this is i like this feature of sidebulb a lot indexability again you can just view the non-indexable urls or urls that have a no index tag so these these urls I put placed a no index tag tag on them on purpose. Okay. Canonicals again, and you can see for instance missing the URLs that do not have a canonical tag. So these are the ones that. Uh, so these are the URLs that have a no index tag, though, so they don't need a canonical URL. Metadata. Okay, so uh, page descriptions, page titles, content, headers, duplicate content security. So links, uh, okay, mi mixed content, performance, web vitals. One thing to keep in mind is that those uh, web vitals, as you can see here, uh, they are showing you the lab data, which is kind of artifi art artificial type of data. Mm, these scores really have nothing to do with how, how your site performs for re real users. And uh, Google, when assessing sites for core web vitals and speed, only takes into account field data, which are the real data that uh, come from real users. And these data come from the Crux report, from user experience report. And you can vi view your field data for core web vitals uh, in Google Search Console or in Google Page Speed Insights, assuming that you have um, enough organic traffic on your site and Google has enough data to be able to calculate and aggregate those, uh, those data for, for your site. Okay, 
Another thing uh, I want to show you here is side visualizations. I really like that. I really like how Sidebulb um, does that. So for instance, you can use a crawl map. Let's, let's see that. Okay. And here, uh, here's the visualization of my site. I like it very much. So as you can see, this is the homepage. As I told you, I was, uh, I took a lot of care uh, into creating the structure that makes sense. That is clear. So this looks, this looks quite clear and clean. So this is the homepage. So these are all the level two pages that my homepage links to. These also include, for instance, the kind of the target pages that are the most important to me. For instance, technical SEO audit. I am linking to that from my homepage. Core Web Vitals audit as well. So these are the, the best pieces of content on my site. And there is also the blog, which is uh, which links to all of the blog posts. So as you can see, the the structure is very clear, and I like I like it. I like what it looks like. Uh, let's let me show you crawl tree. This is a different type of visualization. Uh, again, home page. Here is the blog. Here is the SEO slide pro. Uh, some of those uh, pro. Uh, uh, some of those pro uh, elements uh, are shown to others, so a side bulb can see them. Uh, if you if you want to go deeper into the into this, there will be a, a password protection, so side bulb won't show those other components of SEO Slide Pro. But these are the pages that are visible to everyone. So this is the level 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 three here is the blog and here are the the pages that are linked from from home page or from the top navigation uh crawl crawl radial so this one uh, it also looks quite nice okay mm, directory map let's see this one This one is also quite nice. So here is the home page. So here uh, it is uh, here. Uh, this visualization is based on the URL path. So here are the URLs that have nothing, just that, that, ha that do not have any path. Here you have blog. And here, here are the blog, uh, blog uh, categories. And you can see they have blog in their URL path. So in this case, you, uh, scre uh, not Screaming Frog, Sidebulb is showing them. Similar with Pro, very useful if you are auditing a huge site, a site that has silos and you want to make sure that those silos are really implemented correctly and in a logical way. Let's see directory tree again. I like I like the, those I love those visualizations. I, I maybe I will create a separate video only about that. Okay, and the last one. Okay, so so this is these are the URLs with no nothing else in in your in the URL path. This is pro, and this is the blog. Okay, um, here is the PDF report. So if you want to show some of those types of data in a more attractive way, you can uh, print a PDF report. And those um, sidebulb reports look really attractive. We'll see the one, I will show you the one that sidebulb creates uh, for my site in just a second. So, yeah, I, I really like Sidebulb. I think you will like that too. But I don't think that my SEO audit would be complete if I only use Sidebulb, even though I think it is, I think it is the, the, the best crawler for me. 
the most favorite one, but I would still love to use uh, Screaming Frog, which is kind of more technical, which contains less, fewer explanations. It is just the, the meat of of what it is checking and what it found, of what and what it has found out. Okay, mm, so let's see. Let's see my report. Let's save my report and I will show it to you. So this is the report. So this is the report. So this is basically what I have already showed you in a, in a, in the form of a PDF. And uh, I noticed some SEOs, for instance, just do that crawl the site with a site bulb, create this beautiful, create, generate this report and sell it as an audit. And I really uh, want to kind of warn you against doing that because yeah, there is, there is a lot of nice kind of um, text, educational text. Yeah, this is great, but this report like really needs to be read by you, by an SEO mind. And you just really need to make sure that indeed those things are really, are really, for instance, serious issues. Uh, because like you can see here, page results, URLs with the regs, the, num the number of URLs, it affects just two. And is it really something that deserves a high priority? I don't think so. So be careful with that, with that. But yeah, as you can see, my SEO audit has 80, almost 90 pages. That's a lot. But this is a very, this will definitely be a very educational reading for you. Okay, so I think you can, of course, bulk export all of those specific things. You can export to C, uh, CSV or Google Sheets. It's up to you. There is also the possibility to uh, generate an XML sitemap. You can do that in Screaming Frog as well. Okay, so I think we'll be wrapping up this video. It's already probably way longer than I planned it to be. So, okay. So this was Sidebulb. I really like Sidebulb and I really recommend you, you do crawl any site you, you want to audit with Sidebulb as well and go through all of those things, all of those things in this list, uh, check all of the hints one by one and really make sure that this hint is useful or it is not useful. Make sure to use visualizations because they're, they're very nice. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.